from the T. Colin Campbell Foundation. In 2011, she watched the film Forks Over Knives and decided she didn't want to grow old with poor health and living on prescription medication. She adopted a whole food plant-based diet, dropped 30 pounds, and regained the energy to take care of her family and career. Today, Jill inspires and guides thousands of people seeking to transition to a plant-based lifestyle. You can uh, find Jill on her YouTube channel, Jill McKeever Simple Daily Recipes. She produces live broadcasts and videos every week to encourage and guide viewers with advice and tips on their plant-based journeys. Born and raised in Texas, where she is joining us from Austin, Texas, please give a warm welcome to Jill McKeever. Yay! I have been pressure cooking for 20 years. My grandmother gave me her stovetop pressure cooker when uh, I first married. I didn't have a manual, had to learn everything you know, the hard way. And I've, I've loved using my stovetop pressure cooker, but about three years ago, I discovered the Instant Pot and it totally changed my life. And now I can't imagine like ever going back to using a stovetop pressure cooker. It's, it's amazing. Real quick, how many of you already own an Instant Pot or own a stovetop pressure cooker? And how many of you are like completely scared of pressure cooking and don't want to go near it? <laughs> okay, that's good. You, you guys are going to get a lot out of this, I promise. And there's nothing scary about using an electric pressure cooker. So hopefully I'll set your mind at ease today. It, I have two iPods going. I actually own three because I'm a little obsessed. And, and in, the in the first iPod, I have... Um, what I'm making my veggies in, in creamy curry sauce, which you can find in my cookbook, OMG Good Instapot Meals, plant-based and oil-free. So in my pot, I have potatoes and carrots and onions with a little bit of water and some garlic cloves. And we're gonna pressure cook this for about two minutes. So let me just get this going. I'll talk about all the details in just a few minutes. I'm gonna make sure my seal is in place sitting properly. I'm going to lock on my lid, turn my steam release handle to ceiling, hit the main, I know you can't see this, but hang tight. I'm going to hit the um, manual button, use my minus key to adjust the cooking time down to how about two minutes <laughs> versus 20 minutes on the stove top, right? We're going to, it's going to take two minutes in the iPod. Now on the, my back, that says it's on, it's ready to go. On my back iPod here, I have the bring along black bean hash, and this is one of my kids' favorite meals, especially during the school year when they can put, they can heat it up in the morning, put it in their thermos and carry it with them when they go off to their activities or go off to school. So it's one of their favorite lunches, to, hot lunches to pack. So in it, I have onion, garlic, potato, bell pepper, a can of spicy diced tomatoes, um, some chili powder, cumin, just your basic Tex-Mex spices, a little bit of yellow, fresh yellow corn, and a little water. And just like I did the other recipe, I'm just gonna pop, we're gonna pressure cook it for two minutes. Now while those are coming to pressure, I wanna really get into talking about the iPod. That's where woo woo comes from. If anybody knows me from watching my videos, anytime we say Instapot, we go woo woo. That's where I got that from. Because it's always wooting at us. Like woo woo, I'm ready. And woo woo, dinner's ready. I love that. My favorite woo woos. A, a stovetop pressure cooker and an electric pressure cooker are totally different. You know, there's a lot more to it because you have to, besides getting the food into the stovetop cooker, you're, you're locking on the lid. You have to turn up the heat real high, get the pressure built up in the pot, and then you have to stay right there, wait for that pressure to build up in the pot, and then you have to learn to listen for the chatter of the weight 
on the lid, you know, it has to it has to rock at a certain tempo and that takes time to get the hang of. And then once it's got that right chatter, you have to turn down the, the heat and make sure the chatter remains just where it's supposed to be. And then you set your timer and then you go off and you know you can go off for just a few minutes and then you have to come back. You have to make sure that the the heat is turned off and then you have to wait for the pressure to go down and if you want the pressure to go down quickly you have to care carefully carry the pressure cooker to the sink you have to run you know water over the pot and then before you can get the pressure out and then take the lid off and get your meal and that's a lot of babysitting a lot of babysitting which you know before there was the instant pot or electric pressure cookers we didn't know any different you know we really didn't think about how much of a pain that really was so <laughs> But with the Instapot, there's no babysitting. We're just putting the food into the pot, we're pressing a few buttons, and, and we're walking away. When the, when the Instapot is finished pressure cooking, it automatically kicks into a keep warm mode, and it just keeps the meal hot and ready for you when you're ready to eat it. And that's like, oh. So I love that. That's When I realized that I could push a few buttons and walk away, and I could, make dinner whenever I wanted to, and then it would be ready when my family was ready. That was liberating for me, totally liberating. So I hope that, you know, as you're exploring your iPod and you get an iPod, you just overcome your fears and get one, that, you know, you'll recognize this liberation and you'll just be like, oh, I can't live without you. You're my best friend. You'll sing to it. I promise you will, You because I sing to my, there's people in the room that know what I'm talking about. There's an obsession that happens as soon as you realize how awesome these things are. You know, the Instapot is more than just a pressure cooker. That's one of the things I really love about it because I'm not a one function kind of gal. I love my appliances to do multiple things. So it's a pressure cooker, but one of my favorite things is that it's, it has a saute function. So I can use it as a skillet or a cook pot. It has a keep warm cancel mode. It has manual for pressure cooking, which is what we're doing here. It has a slow cook function. I love it. It's just cool. And then there's some extra buttons on here. Like, it, let me show you. Let's get a close up. So you can see here on the iPod that there's lots of buttons here, but there's really, these are all preset buttons. So if I push them, they would just automatically go to high pressure and then they would have a preset time on them like 30 minutes or 20 minutes uh, you'll see that there's like a rice button and that's great for parboiled rice and those types of things but after you get the hang of this you find i know i found myself only using these buttons on the bottom i like using slow cook saute this is the manual button or the pressure cooking button um, there's a pressure button here where we can actually change from high pressure to low pressure um, i've never used that we have a timer, so if you want to set the, the iPod to start cooking later, you could do that. The adjust button here, this allows us to adjust our heat. When we're slow cooking, we can actually change the heat from less, normal, or high. Uh, most of the time when we start on slow cook or, or uh, saute, the saute mode, it will set, it, it just automatically goes to normal, but we can hit the adjust button and then adjust it from there. And then... Uh, we have the one of the most important buttons, the keep warm cancel button. It helps us cancel modes and move from one mode to another, or we can just keep something warm for a while. And then my favorite button at all, of all time is the yogurt button. This was the reason I bought the Instapot. This baby will make yogurt for you, and um, I love it. It makes yogurt perfectly. I just love this thing. So this is, you know, this is a lot of things. After I had the Instapot, I got rid of my stovetop cooker, I got rid of my slow cooker, I got rid of my rice cooker. I didn't need a yogurt maker. I have more room in my cabinet now. Yay! Oh, I forgot to mention the plus and minus keys. I'm sorry, there, was pl there are plus and minus keys on the iPod and those are used to adjust the cooking time. Okay, so just the basic steps of pressure cooking are go like this. I always I always check my lid to make sure that the seal inside the lid is set properly in place. If it's not set properly, um, steam usually will escape out of the lid and the pressure won't build up and then things won't start cooking. But it, it's real easy to just make sure the seal is in place. I turn and lock on the lid. There's a steam release handle here on the top 
and it's clearly marked sealing and venting. So we turn the steam release handle to sealing when we're pressure cooking and venting when we're slow cooking or sauteing food. Okay, it's already got pressure built up in there. Uh, and then we'll want to hit, uh, we'll, we'll turn the lid until it locks on and the, and the uh, iPod will make sure it'll tell us if, if the lid is not set properly, it will actually say lid on the display. And then it'll chirp, it makes a pretty little chirp when it's, when it's locked into place. And then I'll hit the manual button. I'll use the, the minus key to adjust the time down to whatever time I need. And then um, I just walk away. That's it. It'll chirp three times, tell me it's rocking and rolling, and then it's done. Uh, and then when the cooking time is finished, it will beep several times for me, but it automatically goes into keep warm mode. So if I'm not here or I'm, I don't want to come right back to the iPod right away, that one's already done. Haha, <laughs> I love it. Um, if I don't So if I don't want to come back to the iPod right away, it will just keep my food warm and ready for when we're ready. So you see here, um, I hope you all can see this. So after it's finished, it just automatically kick, kicks into keep warm mode and it'll start with this L uh, saying that it's in low heat and it actually keeps track of the time that it's in uh, keep warm mode. I don't know why, I don't know why we care how long something's been keeping warm, but it's a function there, it's a process. I forgot to turn my steam release handle, <laughs> so pressure was escaping back there. Okay. <laughs> Space happens. 20 years and I can still make mistakes. <laughs> okay. I still got it. Um, okay, so let's talk about cooking time real quick. <clears throat> because when my, I've taught my husband and my, both of my teenagers how to use Instapots. Man, don't keep this kind of information to yourself. There's a big tip for the day. Teach your family how to use the iPod because it is so nice to not have to worry about dinner every now and then. Let somebody else do it. So the first thing I taught my husband um, how to do was make mashed potatoes in the Instapot and he got really confused as to what the cooking time meant. He used my cookbook, he saw that it's, you know, it said cook, uh, cooking time two minutes and he literally thought dinner would be ready, those potatoes would be ready in two minutes. But that's not the way it works. When pressure cooking, uh, you have to allow some time for the cooker to, to heat up the food and heat up the liquid and create steam and pressure to build up. And then once that pressure has built up, the Instapot here, you know, it has the sensors all built in to know when it comes to pressure, then it starts the cooking time. Then you have the cooking time and then the cooking time is over and then there's the, the time that the pressure needs to come down so that you can remove the lid. The time of building up the pressure and the pressure going down varies. And so when you're reading pressure cooking books, most of the time they're telling us the time that we set the cooker, but not the actual time that it's gonna take to cook the meal. Does that make sense? When it comes to pressure release methods, there's actually three. We have natural pressure release, which if you're reading pressure cooking uh, recipes online, you usually see them say NPR. They're not talking about the radio station. They're just talking about natural pressure release. Natural pressure release is when you just let the pressure in the pot go down on its own. And then you can't see from here, I'm sorry, but there is a float valve here on the lid. It's a little metal rod. So imagine this is the hole on the lid and there's a little metal rod that kind of pokes up and when the, pre when the pressure is in the pot, and then when the pressure goes down, it, it, it drops down and it looks like a hole again. And that's when you know that uh, there's no pressure in the, in the pot. You can turn the lid and lift the lid away. Um, that float valve is also a lock. It's a lid lock. So if it's in the up position, it will not let you take the lid off. So there's no way for you to hurt yourself while you're working the pressure cooker. 10 minute natural pressure release would be when we wait 10 minutes after the cooking time is complete, then we'll turn the uh, steam release handle from, ste uh, from sealing to venting and we'll let that pressure escape. 
which is easy, no big deal. And then the last one is quick release, which I'm gonna do here, uh, where you just, as soon as the cooking time is completed, you just turn it and you let that, the pressure release. <laughs> that one's done too, yay! There's nothing to be scared of when you're letting the steam out of the pressure cooker. You just need to be careful. The steam release handle has three little holes here. So you just wanna make sure that your hand and your face are not over the steam release handle, okay? So I'm just gonna turn this to ceiling. And it's gonna take about one minute for the pressure to uh, come out of the pot. I'm gonna run these both. It's gonna be a little loud, so I'm not gonna try to talk while it's going on. to this pot so this is again this is the veggies and creamy curry uh, with the creamy curry sauce recipe and so my potatoes and carrots are thoroughly cooked and tender and uh, what I need to do now is add some fresh spinach and tomato let me stir this in and then I need to make a, uh, my creamy curry sauce that we're going to pour over it When they when they first uh, when you first take the lid off, so try not to touch them without an oven bit. I wish you could see this. I wish there was like a little camera from above, but I'll let you see it here in just a second. I'll get the cream sauce in here, and then you can see it. All right, um, in my neutral bullet. I don't think you can see that from here. I have a Nutra bullet hanging out here on the side. I love anybody have a Nutra bullet? When I have something small that I want to process that I know I can't get into my Vitamix, I always get out the Nutra bullet. I love this for being able to cream nuts and make salad dressings when I only need like a half a cup of something or a cup of something. Um, I like to blend it here uh, because there's no way I can blend that small of amount in a Vitamix. So this is going to be a little noisy for just a second. Um, in this, I have uh, a cup of cashews, a cup and a half of water, two tablespoons of curry, and a little bit of salt, and that's it. bullet so that makes that nice okay so we've gone from pressure cooking in here but now I want to turn this into a cook pot and bring my cashew cream sauce uh, to a simmer so I'm going to use the saute mode and turn it on but first I'm going to cancel the keep warm function and then I'm going to hit saute and saute and then I'm going to hit the adjust button and adjust the heat down to less which is a pretty it's to me it's somewhere but between a, a meat like a medium low on your stove top it kind of runs hot and then um, I'm gonna just pour this creamy sauce right over my spinach and vegetables and the heat off the potatoes and what little water I had in here will wilt that spinach very quickly and the, the creamy sauce will thicken in about two minutes and then it's done that's all there is to do with this recipe. It is like one of my favorite simple recipes to make. I know you want to see this. I want to show you. I could precariously dangle my laptop over the Instapot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I can be brave like that. Let me check this iPod back here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Okay. That won't take long to simmer. Hold on. If I'm going to dangle my laptop precariously over the iPods, we might as well do both recipes, not just one. 
One of my other favorite things I love about the Instapot is that the inner pot comes out of the cooker and makes it really easy to clean. All right, y'all ready? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I sure like you guys. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Looks good. So, so oh, let's see, I'm gonna hold this with one hand. All right, so we're, hold on, I'm holding this laptop one-handed. I am awesome. Okay, so this just needs to come to a simmer for a couple of minutes and it will thicken up. So when you go to make this recipe, it, the, the cashew sauce is gonna be watery, but, but trust me, it will thicken up very quickly. and we'll, You'll wanna keep your eye on it and keep stirring it because the starches from the potato will also help it to thicken and you could get some scorching on the bottom of the pot, okay? And then here's the bring along black bean hash, which from the uh, cookbook, I usually use uh, potatoes for my kids, but since we're all grown-ups here, I put a big old sweet potato in there instead because I like sweet potato and black beans. So I thought it'd be prettier with sweet potato. So that's what's going on in there. Let's see if I can stir this up a little. You can see the corn, sorry. I'm holding the laptop one-handed. So we've got a nice, beautiful color, fresh corn. Uh, the black beans, I, I cooked in the Instapot yesterday. The tomatoes and red bell pepper are in there too. This is just lunch, that's what that is. Mm, gosh, it's awesome. Okay, back to the, back to the yoga blocks. That's what you're sitting on. All right, hold on. Blocks. <laughs> I had to get the angle just right. So the yoga blocks are finally paying off. I'm really yes. using them now. Okay, so I just have a few more points that I'd like to share about the Instapot. Don't let me forget about this cream sauce, because I will. Talking and cooking, believe it or not, it's not one of my strong suits. Mm. Okay, don't burn. Be cool, don't burn. Okay. Okay, so we've talked about the keep warm mode, saute mode. Um, I've just used it, you're seeing me use it. Uh, I love using the saute mode. Since having an Instapot, I pretty much, the, the oven is dead to me now. I don't use my stovetop anymore. I will use um, any opportunity I have uh, to use the, the Instapot, I will do it. And there's plenty of recipes out there that just require cooking on a, you know, in a, in a cook pot that don't need pressure cooking. And that's where the saute mode comes in handy for me. I will, you know, saute some vegetables, some onions and broth, you know, bell pepper or celery or whatever, you know, do the, do the Holy Trinity and, and throw a little soup together. Uh, you know, that maybe just needs about five or 10 minutes to simmer. And then um, I'll turn on the keep warm mode and, and dinner's done or lunch is done. And I love that because there's a lot of times I mean, I know y'all know this, right? I mean, when we when we um, we rock and roll every day and we party every night, sometimes, you know, when we have a chance to cook dinner, it doesn't really line up with what the rest of the world, you know, needs and, and all that kind of thing. So, so, um, so if I can get if if I can sneak dinner in and get it prepared at two o'clock in the afternoon and then just hit the keep warm mode and let it just sit there in keep warm mode until my family's ready. I mean, again, another liberating moment in life to just get that, you know, to get that that respons responsibility done. So um, I love it and I, I use saute mode a lot. So I love it for that. Um, let's talk about accessories. When you first get your iPod, they give you a, a measuring cup and a plastic spoon and they give you a trivet and I don't use any of those. I, I never use the measuring cup. Okay, I'm, I'm hot. I'm not turning that off. I can feel it. I'm thick and saucy. Um, occasionally I use that trivet uh, only to keep like uh, potatoes out of the water of, while they're pressure cooking. Most of the time I like to use just a regular steam basket, you know, the ones that we've had for years that, that keep our broccoli out of our cook pots. Um, I will usually just use that one. Um, if you don't have one, you want to get, I like just get like a seven inch 
traditional steam basket and it fits nicely in the five quart, six quart, and even the eight quart Instapot. So I really like that one. So if you have one of these, don't feel like you have to buy anything new and special, okay? Oh, the lid. If anybody's considering whether they want to buy the glass lid that goes with the Instapot, well, I'll let that be your decision, but I'll say that I certainly use my glass lid a lot more than I thought I would. Originally, I bought the glass lid because I'm a YouTuber and I love the Instapot and I thought, well, let me just buy it to see how, you know, how useful it really is. And so I kind of bought it with, you know, a little skepticism, but it turns out I do use it a lot. There's plenty of times when I'm cooking something and I really don't want to, um, I don't want to dirty up the lid because dirtying up the lid is, involves the seal and all that kind of stuff. So it's easier for me to just drop this glass lid on top of the pot and it keeps things hot. Especially after I've made brown rice, I can take the inner pot out and put out here on the counter because we kind of eat family style around here. Having this glass lid to keep the brown rice warm is nice. So, so I'm surprised I use it a lot more than I do. Let's talk about seals. If you're connected to any of the, the, the Instapot Facebook groups, you see a lot of talk about the seals and whether you should have backup seals and all that type of thing. I think you can tell which one of these seals is older and which one's cooked more chili than the other one. But the seals, they are rubber and they do absorb flavors. But I've had my Instapots for several years and uh, this one particularly, you can see, look. See, you can see how brown that is. This one's three years old. This one's probably about a year and a half. Uh, but their, their discoloration is really just coming from like all the chili and black beans and the Indian food that I've made. And it's just absorbed chili powder. It does have an odor that I can't get out. And I've tried uh, bleach and I've tried vinegar and it just won't come out. But no big deal because I have made yogurt and rice and the odor in the rubber has not affected yogurt making so i'm really happy for that but you know here's what it's supposed to or this is what it looks like new and i try to keep this one clean just for comparison's sake so i try to only use this seal when i'm cooking rice um, so that it stays white um, just just for this demonstration but anyways no big deal these are very sturdy seals and uh, if you, when you first get your iPod, don't feel like you just have to run out and get a, a seal right away. And they're easy to wash. I just wash them with soap and water. Uh, and so speaking of cleaning, it's really easy to clean your iPod. Oh, I always clean the house with just a soft washcloth. You saw me take the, the seal out. I'll just wash that with soap and water. And then the top here, you can submerge the lid in water. That's fine. I'll always take the steam release handle out you can see that um, there's holes in it there are holes in through the top so you want to make sure that starch and food does does not clog the the holes um, the vent pipe here you want to check through it to make sure there's no starch or food and you can just look through there and see that there's light shining through if you if, if there is a blockage i just use a pipe cleaner of course i don't know who eats smokes pipes anymore but but, um, or go grab your kid's Chanel crafts, <laughs> craft Chanel and just run it through there and that cleans it up easy. And then on the back here, um, I guess this is, they, I don't think they have this anymore. They've tried to change the back, but there's a little cover here that protects the steam release uh, valve. So I take that off and clean that. If, if it gets starch on it, if it's clean, then I just rinse it. So not a big deal not a lot to uh, worry about and that just pops back on and then what happens over time is like the first time you make rice in your inner pot you'll see that your stainless steel inner pot gets, starts to get cloudy and it will just keep getting cloudy well that's just starch it happens with potatoes too if you're making a lot of mashed potatoes in your iPod starches from from those vegetables start to make the inner pot cloudy and the easiest way to make them bright and fresh again is just adding a little bit of uh, white vinegar. I keep a jug of vinegar underneath my sink and I'll just add maybe a quarter of an inch of vinegar to the bottom of the pot and I just swirl it around and I let it sit there. And within a few minutes, the vinegar eats at the starches and then I can just 
Um, I recycle the vinegar and, uh, and I just wipe it out and wash it as normal and then it's like nothing ever happened. So it's super easy to clean that cloudiness out. So that's it. That's all I can think of to share with you. Are there, <laughs> are there any questions?